Our story today starts with a few thousand fresh law grads logging into the California bar exam in February of this year expecting stress, not a clown show. The exam decided this year to try something new, a hybrid testing system that included a homemade set of questions and, tucked away quietly within there, a handful of multiple choice items penned not by legal scholars, but by AI. This system was very Hiddle heavy, that's human in the loop, so even though there was an AI here, there's always supposed to be human oversight. This magic acronym is often used as a green light to any project where individuals are weary about giving up some control to a machine. And the California bar exam this year might be the single best example of where Hiddle goes wrong. The exam didn't really malfunction so much as it tended to unravel entirely. This was not the first bar exam to have a bad day, but it might be the first to be accused of being co-written by a chatbot, and that detail wasn't shared ahead of time. Only later, when this issue became unavoidable and emails were flying with increasing panic, did the admission actually emerge. 23 multiple choice questions had been written with the assistance of AI. To those not in the legal profession, this might sound like a small shortcut. After all, AI writes blog posts, it negotiates customer support refunds, and hell, it'll even go ahead and deny your insurance claims for you. All released with metrics claiming that they're as good as any single subject matter expert. But this job was never intended to go out to a single expert, rather it was supposed to go to a panel of peers who are also equally qualified and willing to scrutinize the data before before it went to students. Let's back things up for just a second. In the fall of 2024, California's state bar faced a financial shortfall, not a minor budgeting hiccup, rather a projected $22 million deficit. You know, the kind of casual hole that makes spreadsheets cry. One of those more expensive recurring costs was licensing standardized questions from the National Conference of Bar Examiners. So the state bar decided to find some outside help in hopes of making the budget stretch. Contracts were drawn, Kaplan was hired to churn out the majority of the new multiple choice questions, and another firm, ACS Ventures, was tapped to consult on test and design validation. And buried in the consultant's questions was the quiet introduction of artificial intelligence, a tool used to help draft just over a dozen of the questions that would end up on the test. The exact nature of that assistance was never precisely defined. Was it a co-writer, a prompt generator, a ghost in the multiple choice shell? Regardless, what's clear here is that 23 of the 171 scored questions had been partially written by an AI system. The questions were never pre-tested. Normally, bar exam questions go through years of development, reviewed by law professors, tested on sample groups, fine-tuned until they balance difficult with fairness, but this process had been rushed. The new California questions were developed in months, not years, and deployed without the usual safety checks. The test platform itself, meanwhile, had its own story arc in this. Measure learning. Measure? Measure? Uh, it's gonna be one of those two. Somebody, somebody will go ahead and correct me in the comments, I'm sure. So Major Learning had been hired on to run a remote and in-test hybrid system. Uh, it was not a roaring success. Proctors failed to log in, essay questions wouldn't load, and some candidates spent more time on hold with tech support than on the test itself. One examinee reportedly rebooted three laptops mid-exam and still didn't manage to finish the test. What emerged was a perfect shitstorm of undercooked tech and overextended ambition. It wasn't that the AI questions alone were bad, it was that their presence in an already fragile system made the collapse harder to untangle. Honestly, if major learning hadn't run into so many problems, some of this might have been glossed over entirely, but nothing makes people hypercritical like wasting their time or impacting their career. And because the bar never disclosed the use of AI up front, its later admissions added insult to injury on an already stressed out group of future lawyers. Folks began flagging items that felt weirdly phrased or like something was missing. There was one dean making comments on some of these questions that said they read like Mad Libs, only the blanks weren't entirely filled in. Once the smoke cleared and the laptops cooled down, California's state bar found itself in the unbelievable position of having to explain why nearly 6,000 people had to undergo an opaque AI experiment. 
The first wave of fallout arrived in the form of emails. Apologies were issued first to candidates, then to law schools, and eventually to the California Supreme Court, which had approved the exam overhaul in the first place. And if you're going, why the fuck would they apologize? Sadly, it is pretty simple. The Supreme Court's blessing had come with a polite nudge towards technological exploration. It was not an invitation to beta test legal licensure on live subjects. Uh, lawsuits followed, with test takers claiming emotional distress, professional harm, and in some cases, total exam failure due to system malfunctions. One lawsuit described the process as an unmitigated disaster, and that's the politest way I can think to describe this clusterfuck, to be honest. The exam vendor, Major Learning, was named in all of this, and the state bar, protected by examinee waivers and a thin layer of institutional armor, uh, was not, though it would later file a suit of its own against Major. Basically, this just devolved into a bureaucratic food fight, with one agency lobbying legalese at another while applicants waited for answers about whether or not they would actually get licensed. To address the exam's damage, the bar convened with its committee of bar examiners and came up with a series of remedial steps. The passing score was lowered. A statistical patch was applied to account for technical errors, something called psychometric imputation, which I am also sure I am not saying correctly. Uh, in plain terms, this is like grading a test that you didn't finish based on how well you were doing before your computer decided to opt out of life. Let's all be thankful though that this is the only time we'll be mentioning the term psychometric anything during this video. The biggest letdown for folks came in April when the bar publicly confirmed the AI involvement. The revelation wasn't exactly met with open arms, and still, they ended up defending the process. Officials noted that the overall exam reliability score had remained within an acceptable range. In statistics, the reliability coefficient for the exam was clocked in at 0.89, well above the benchmark set of 0.80. The implication was clear. Sure, a few questions had gone sideways, but the math says everything is actually okie dokie, regardless of the AI involvement. And between you and me, I'm personally on the side of the math here. With the bar now several apologies in, they finally admitted the AI process hadn't included pre-testing or the typical peer review. Not just that there was AI involved, but that there was no human involvement when there should have been. But still, their argument held. Budget constraints had left little time for finesse. The AI wasn't supposed to be a villain here. It was supposed to be a tool used by consultants to assist in drafting. By May, the California Supreme Court had reasserted control. Future exams would return to traditional, nationally sourced questions. The in-person format would be restored, uh, executive leadership at the bar was reshuffled, and for one brief, awkward moment, the legal profession in the country's largest state was forced to reckon with the fact that AI might be good, but it doesn't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with seasoned experts. This wasn't a machine learning failure. At the end of the day, it was just an oversight issue. The algorithm did what it was asked to, draft questions based on prompts. The people reviewing those outputs did not apply the same care they would have to a human colleague. And yet, I don't think that means that AI should forever be banned from professional testing. Remember us talking about Hiddle at the start of this? Well, it exists for a reason, and this is a perfect example of how any organization can just go, oh yeah, we have a human in the loop, a dozen in fact, no worries. Hiddle does not mean blindly trust unless it looks wrong. Hiddle means scrutinize. Professional exams aren't sacred, but they are symbolic. They represent the idea that entry into high-stakes fields like medicine, engineering, and law should be measured and defensible. If that system feels arbitrary or secretive, people begin to doubt not just the test, but the profession it serves. I think at this point, I've left my lane a little bit to comment on this one, so let's go ahead and wrap some stuff up. In the end, California's bar exam didn't just trip over the end goal, uh, it tripped over its own assumptions about modernization. The next time a licensing body talks about leveraging AI, the lesson isn't to run from the idea. It's to walk carefully, with the lights on, and with humans who remember that they are the ones making the decision at the end of the day and will ultimately be responsible for that decision. Or at least, you know, they should be. 
All right, folks, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, looking at our Joust screen, I think we're going to need to make some more adjustments for the next video to the math. But in the meantime, we have made some advancements in the crypto space, and I cannot wait to share that with you guys over the next couple of months. See you, nerds.